questions about my work or their creative process? No hard questions. Don't have to be easy. Yes, Karen. Hey, this, this, this is somewhere between easy and really difficult, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. Anyway, um, as you're going through the creative process, and the creative process is, is, is growing to the point that, uh, for good reasons, you're having a you're trying to keep up with your work. How do you keep your bills paid? You know what I mean? Like, I don't get paid to sit and write, which I, I don't know if I would enjoy that, but I gotta pay electricity, I gotta pay rent, and um, I'm working several uh, below wage jobs. Right. I, like, I'm not earning a living wage anywhere. Right. But how do I not work? too much to the point that I take time away from my creative place, my creative place. Right, right, right. That's a great question. That's a great question. So Karen's asking, while uh, you know, in the middle of your creative process as you're working on your creative stuff that you're not getting paid uh, a living wage to do, how do you then keep the bills, you know, keep the roof over your head, the lights on, um, or to, you know, while you're getting out, while having enough time to keep doing your work, correct? And we're, you know, a lot of people, you know, will move back in with their parents or that kind of thing, but we're assuming that that's not what you want to do. That's not what I did. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't live in America um, after college. Um, it's a really great question. There are a couple of things. I'm sure you've thought of most of them already, but maybe there are some people out there who haven't thought of some of these things, so we'll just talk about them. Um, one is lower your overhead, right? That's one thing, lower your overhead. So, and I know, you, Karen, I know you don't have this thing, um, but if you have, um, you know, if you just must absolutely see all the movies when they come out or buy the latest handbag or whatever, you know, your money's going into places that, right? I'm just saying, okay? Um, or have, you know, five cars in your garage. How do I pay these bills? Okay. So lower your overhead, that's one thing. Also, um, Shorten the amount of time it takes for you to get your work done. A lot of us think, a lot of us think that, um, and this is again not something that Karen has said to me or, or even thinks, I'm sure, but a lot of us think, I could, and you've, I hear this a lot of cocktail parties, I could be a writer if I had, the, if I had all day, I've got a novel in me, it would come out. That's the myth, that's a myth, that's not, again, that's not what Karen is suggesting. But if I had all day, if I had a whole block of time every day, if I had th three straight hours to write every day, uninterrupted, I could get my work done, right? So shorten the amount of time that you need to get your work done. That's, and that kind of goes for everybody, if you're a mom, or a dad who has to take care of his kid on a you know, regular basis or a mom who has to take care of her kid on a regular basis. Um, if you have other obligations like that, okay? So that's something. Um, so say, if you think, I could only get my work done if I had an hour, for example, right? Say you don't have an hour, right? So then start telling yourself that you can get your work done in 30 minutes. Yeah, become a ninja. Become a soul ninja. A ninja. And then do. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, that's <laughs> that is hysterical. Wait. Yes. Yes. <laughs> for the for the ninju in you. Oh, there we go. And then we have the matzos. We're ready. And yes, become a ninja. I said become a ninja. And she Yes, okay. Yeah, we're we're ready. Um, <laughs> um, very good. So also also make use of, 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 of times that you think are just throwaway times. You know, um, I know you live in far away somewhere. Long subway ride. I used to get a lot of writing done on the subway. Most of my writing, because I had a day job and all that kind of stuff. I used to get a lot of my writing done on the subway. I still get some of my writing done on the subway. Still, I have to take the train to go teach uh, a class up in the middle. I get a lot of my writing done on the train. Okay, so I use that time as Time to write. I wear earplugs, you know, I think. Not not with the music for the iPhone thing, but you know, sound cancellation devices, and I write on the train. Okay, so if you have any habits that might be taken away from your writing time, like you have a television, or you go on Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu or whatever, 
or you just coast surfing the, the net, the web, find out what Kim Kardashian is doing after she appeared on the cover of Vogue with Kanye. What's she up to now? Who gives up? Yeah, I know. She ain't gonna help you, right? I, I mean, maybe she will. Maybe she'll come over to your house and help you. I don't think so. <laughs> so cut out those unnecessary habits or those less than necessary habits. Even, we talked about this a long time ago, even if you spend an hour, you have writing time of an hour and a half, and you spend an hour journaling, and then you get to your writing project, guess what? Cut down your journaling time. So maybe spend 30 minutes journaling and one hour of writing. Okay, so start looking at your life, your daily life, where you can trim some time. Because I also play music, as most of you know. And people say, when do you find the time? You have a kid, you have a writing to do, and you're learning the banjo, and you play guitar. Yeah, I don't watch TV, unless I have to, because I also write for TV. So the necessary work I do, but I don't just, and I realize when I'm surfing the internet and reading about Kim Kardashian, because I do know she's on the cover of Vogue with Kanye. When I catch myself, I'm reading, I'm looking, and I'm, you know, and I'm like, let her go. She'll be all right without me. And let her go. And so really look at your life and find out where, because I think the issue and the, the problem is actually, could actually generate some opportunities for you. Okay, and start telling yourself, my life is full of opportunities to write, and I'm getting my work done. You know? Because I could, you know, I have a two and a half year old son, I could be like, oh, I'm boy. What am I gonna, what am I gonna, what am I gonna, oh, I can't write anymore. I picked up the banjo. Watch me work. Yes, Carol, this one gets to add to that. Yeah, yes, add to it, add to it. Um, times like even folding laundry can be creative times. You know, your mind can go blank and you're thinking and you don't know where you're going, sitting in a dentist's office or in raising kids when you're taking them to this lesson or that lesson. Yeah. So much of my writing got done yeah. during waiting time. Yeah. I mean, understood, like, and at night. She, yeah, she, Karen, she, she, you're onto it, you're totally onto it. I mean, I know you work really hard, Karen, so it's, you know. <laughs> if I had a day structure, like, that would work, or... If you had a what? A day stretcher. Yeah. It's a joke. It doesn't exist. Yeah. But it does, actually it does. It's in your mind. Okay. And it starts out with the phrase, I have all the time I need to get my work done. That's the day stretcher right there. <coughs> Suddenly, because I really, I use it all the time. I believe I get up at 6, uh, 5 30, I meditate, Durham gets up, I stop, you know. I do. I'm not even working. You know, then the day begins. You know what I'm saying? I just keep saying, I have plenty of time to get my work done. I have plenty, there's plenty of time for everything. That's the day stretcher, it's how you see it. How you frame your day, how you see your day, can make a huge difference. Discussion with some people, and they were speaking of emerging poets, which I always consider myself. Yes, I consider emerging. The people that they were describing as emerging in that category were leaps and bounds beyond where I was at. So then they threw out this other term of a pre-emerging playwright, which I kind of identify with. Right, the moment, right. But, and then other people were arguing about that. So I don't know what you think, but oh, I find it interesting. I find it interesting that people are arguing about the yeah. pre-emerging, emerging. <laughs> Emerging, emerging, 
you know. Does it help you to identify yourself? No, it was more <coughs> concerned with applying for things. Because I just feel like, I don't know, it, it really kind of threw me for a loop. And I was considering myself as being for the longest time, and I thought well, maybe I'm not even qualifying as a virgin playwright because I'm not even at that point yet, based on their criteria that they were talking about. Based on the criteria of the funding source? No, based on the criteria, in this discussion, what they were considering as an emerging player. Yeah, right. I, 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 I think, yeah, I think, you know, emerging, mid-career, old people, I mean, what, what, what do you call it? established, you know, uh, untouchables, you know, I'm at it. You know, there are touchables on either end. You can't touch Edward Alvey. You can't touch someone you've never even heard of. I mean, what do we, you know, yes, for applying for grants, it's important to know where you are. But I would say, if you feel like you're an emerging playwright and there's a grant that you want, apply for it. Don't let people talk you out of applying for, you know what I mean? It's, at the end of the day, I believe, I've been on some of those committees, not a lot of them, it's your work that is that shines and you get recommendation letters from people, things like that. That's what's gonna, it's your work. So the committee will be looking at your body of work, reading your plays, reading your letters of recommendation, and then, you know, and you don't have to be at a certain level to go to an art colony, get a grant, whatever they, it's the work. Thank you for asking that question because I actually struggle really badly with that one, and I just yeah I no no hell no it's really it's I'll talk to you after it's horrible, but it's really kind of intimidating, and it's but I apply anyway because who are they to tell me that I can't apply? So that's always been my motto, even though like I don't even go on the sites like I think it's a hindrance to even go on the sites and read what people who have won has accomplished, because it will eat you. So don't do that. We'll talk. <laughs> no, that's very, that's very helpful. That's yeah. not as important yeah. as you are. So definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, keep in mind our Twitter. Yes, we have, we have to have a Twitter question today. But yes, what's your name? <laughs> I'm John. Hi, John. Hi. Um, so I'm an actor, not a writer. So if, if you <laughs> think the question is, uh, irrelevant, we can skip and go right to the tweet, I understand. We'll answer it anyway. Okay. Um, my question is, sometimes you get cast in something, and or you're assigned, um, I'm an NYU student, and you get assigned a scene, and you're just, for whatever reason, you're having a really hard time connecting with whatever it is that character's doing, or whatever's happening. So my question is, or I guess I'm asking for advice on, you know, this can be from personal experience, because you've lived more life than I have. How can I get myself into a possible place where I can maybe find a new way to connect or open my mind up to something that I'm not quite getting just looking at the page or right. something like that? How right, can I right. expand? No, 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 no. It's, it's the same, it's a, and it's a similar question. It's a great question. How can I connect with my wonderful source inside when I'm having a difficult time? Which is kind of what you're asking. You're specifically John's an actor, so he's asking as an actor, but how can I connect with my wonderful thing when I'm having a difficult time? And if you think, this is like we talked to Karen about the day stretcher. Right. You start by saying to yourself, I'm connecting with this part better, better every time I read it, or every time I walk into rehearsal. I'm finding connections with this part because. The situation is existing right now for you so that you can learn how to do this. You understand? Yes. Okay. The situation right now, you've been given a part that you don't feel connected to, so you said, so that you can learn how to get connected when you don't feel connected. And that's why it's there for you right now. Okay, and you're, you're gonna keep having the experience until you learn how to connect with yourself when something's hard. I had a writer in my class, I teach at Yale and NYU, I had a writer last week who was having a very hard time because her play wasn't where she wanted it to be and she needed to show it to people and have a public uh, reading of it. She was worried. And I said, it has nothing to do with your play. It has to do with the fact that you're worried about showing stuff to people when you're not ready. And what are you going to do about that? So you can start by saying, I feel more connected with my with the part right now more than ever. I find connections. Connections to the part come to me all the time. I'm seeing stuff every day just when I think about the part. I read the part tonight over and I feel wow. I find connections in it all the time. This is a really great part for me. 
No, really, really. You just you just start to say to to really re experience. Like I have a lot of time to get my work done. I tell myself that all the time. Someone looking at my schedule would think, oh you've got to be crazy. I'm gonna tell I get my work done all the time. I have time to learn the banjo. And it starts to happen. I don't know how that works, but I know it, it, it works in my experience. Okay? So you say, this is a really good part for me. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna learn a lot by doing this. This is good. I'm gonna look back on this and feel like, good on you, John. Good, good job. You did it. You did well. You know? It'll make you better for the next time when you feel like the part is perfect for me. You'll be a better actor. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes.
I want you to move around. Let's so just try that. Just try that. And if you really cannot hear anything that you'd like to add or subtract to it, then tweet us or come back and we'll think of something else. So just try that. Just stand up, print out your work, and read it aloud. And I want you to move around like your apartment is bigger than like an index card. I, and I think Walt Whitman like ran around the beach and said his poems aloud. Like, <laughs> you don't need to do that. You know, just walk around with it, okay? Just try that. Yes? What would you say when you get um, two contrasting opinions about something you've done, both from people you respect? Uh -huh. So you get, let's say, yeah. one person who really likes it, one person who really doesn't. Right. How do you choose what to listen to from right. each That's person? That's a great question. What's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Are you, is it writing or acting? Acting. Acting. Really true. So, um, like, maybe your director will give you a note and your producer, or like, I mean, something like that, or if you have two friends that come see the show and they, you both, or you trust both of their opinions, and one says, I really liked you in this part, and the other one says, that didn't fit you well. Yeah, right. right what right. do you... Right, so there's a deciding vote, right? Yeah. You. What do you think? Okay. Did you like, were you just in a part where someone said... Yeah. Like, what do you think? I mean, before I had heard both opinions, I... I liked it. I thought it. I thought it really fit me well, and I did a good job in it. And then that that contrasting opinion from someone who I really do trust, and like I trust that person to not no BS, and they always right, tell me right, exactly right, what right. they think. Right. Hey, it's just started to like I guess make me doubt. Okay. And what about the person who said they liked it a lot? What do you think of them really? Same same thing. Same thing. They they don't BS me either. I would say you have the deciding vote, because that's the only, you know what I mean? Build up the habit of trusting yourself. You get the deciding vote, you know? And <clears throat> I think, what is, did your, was your director was probably pleased? Yeah. Okay, then that's, then that's, we got more votes on the other side, and the other person, eh, they just see you differently. Okay. And they're telling the truth, and they're not BSing you, and they care about you, and they want you to succeed, but they just see it differently. And that's okay, but I think, if you feel good about it, you did a lot of hard work, and your director is pleased, and you probably did a great job. <laughs> I'm sure you did a great job. And then it didn't fit you. Well, there's a side of it that they don't know, maybe. Okay. I mean, you know, and they'll grow. And keep your eye on, you know, and then catalog their feedback in your... Right. Because that's like, hmm, you know? Right, it will be helpful later on, the contrast. Do we have one more time for Twitter? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, what's your name? Mine? No. Uh, John. John. Yep. What you said about you don't feel like you write good anymore. Right. You know, it's really, there's a lot, like a beautiful trip. You remember when you were a kid? More or less, yeah. I mean, younger than you are now. Yes, yeah, Let's yeah. Let's say yeah. eight years old or seven yeah. or six. You know, you could be anybody. You could be a cowboy, an Indian, a, a, you know, a plane you could be anybody you wanted to be. You can remember that. And that is who you are. Thank you. Good. Good answer. All right. We got someone on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, we can read it. We can read it. Okay. Uh, Jay Larry says, how important do you think outline is to the writing process? Once it's made, how sacred is the outline? Oh, what a great question, Jay Larry. From where? Where is it? You know? Where is it? Wow. Okay, now how important is this? Is this some of you guys know? No. No, laughing over there. How important is the outline and how sacred is it once we've written it? Um, I do like outlines. I do like outlines. Um, because, uh, only because I, I, you know, forget what I'm doing half the time. So I, an outline is like a rope and I hold on to it and I, you know, ease my way along. Um, but it's not sacred. It's not, you know, a sacred thing. So I have a game plan. <clears throat> um, maybe, yeah, oh, maybe it's the art of war that says, maybe I'm paraphrasing. The general has a battle plan, but in the, in the battle, she is in the moment. The general has a battle plan, but when she's in the battle, she's in the moment. And so I got a plan, 
an outline. But as I walk through the novel of the writing of the camera now, the new play, I allow it to get in flex, you know, as, as necessary. Um, so that, I hope, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, make an outline. If you, if you, like, if you don't like outlining, don't be going through it. An outline can be Roman numerals, if you want. Or it can be um, regular Arabic numerals, or it can be letters, or it can be index cards. You know, it doesn't have to be a Roman numeral kind of document on, you know, in stone. Um, JP says, high five, high four, JP says. High three, JP says. Uh oh, which finger is, oh, okay. Two, one, we're done. Thank you. Bye.